Hi, I'm Wallace Cunningham, Director of Multicultural Outreach with AARP South Carolina. I am here to let you know that AARP is about promoting positive social change, the kind of social change that benefits everyone, especially those persons 50 plus and their families. AARP wants everyone to have a high quality of life. For more information, give us a call at 803-765-7376 or visit our website at aarp.org. Have your taxes prepared by DT Taxes and get a free netbook computer. Call 803 753 4711 for details or get up to $1,500 tax cash back now in 90 seconds. Call DT Taxes. Hi, and welcome to this edition of MyMetroTV.com Daybreak. First stop to the rest of the weekend. I'm Frederick Knight. Thank you for joining us on this, our final show for 2011. Coming up on the show today, we'll look at some of the stories we brought you previously. Plus, we've got the Metro Movie Minute and the Premier Plus Motors Deals of the Week. All that and more coming up on today's edition of MyMetroTV.com Daybreak. First stop to the rest of the weekend. We spoke with Paige Green, CASA Executive Director, about the organization and its history. Richland County CASA, and that stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates, actually opened their doors for business in 1983 under the wisdom and resources of the Junior League of Columbia. They started off with just a handful of, of volunteers and uh, our dear Miss Ann Cleckley, she was the first director for Richland County CASA. But it all started out uh, to be to have a voice for a child in court, for children whose interests were before the family court for abuse and neglect actions. Um, everyone felt like that it was best that those children have someone to represent just their interest. And so that's how the CASA got started. Uh, started off as a completely nonprofit organization and through the years Richland County government gave um, money and resources to um, to CASA and uh, then soon it became a fully funded county department. Uh, one of the unique things about Richland County CASA is, is that we never abandoned that nonprofit arm and so we currently are a fully funded county department completely autonomous from the state guardian ad litem program we are an accredited program through National CASA one of uh, I think they have like 900 and some programs and, uh, and we also have our board of directors, and so they manage our nonprofit arm. CASA volunteers are guardians ad litem, and we are desperately needing more volunteers. Um, our children, the, the need has never been greater than it is today. Uh, each and every year we serve over 1,500 children. Uh, now we're richly blessed with a lot of great folks who are guardians right now for us. We have over 420 right now, but that's not enough and we need more people who just to open their uh, just o open their arms and, and hearts to serve for a child. It takes about five hours a month and we will work with you and train you as uh, we got a training class that starts in January and uh, but we will help you in any way to get through this process. We asked Ms. Green about the requirements to become a CASA guardian. To become a CASA volunteer, first of all you got to be 21 and uh, then you do we have a background check that includes you know a, a sled check and, and several background you know components of that you have to complete the National CASA training curriculum that's a 36 hour course and we incorporate a lot of self-study components in that as well as individual one-on-one -on -one courtroom observation and so you complete that training and once you've completed that then what we try to do is to match what your interest is so let's say let's say Mike that you were going to be a CASA volunteer okay and so let's say you say I really enjoy working with teenagers I think that I can identify with teenagers then when a case came for us to assign a guardian to I would be thinking be mindful that you know this this child might be matched great with Mike um, or some people prefer to work with babies uh, and so we try to do a really good match on the front end of what the volunteers feels that their interest and their strengths are. 
We also were able to speak with James Washington, who heads up the recruiting efforts for CASA. My personal ministry and, and ministry for, the com for our organization is the recruitment of minority males, although we need volunteers desperately. Again, um, we routinely serve over 1,500 children per year, and although we've been very blessed with having a reservoir of well over 400 volunteers, our numbers are very disproportionate to the number of children we have in care. Unfortunately, in our program, typically anywhere between 300 and 400 children in foster care in Richmond County alone every month. Of those numbers, black males make the highest demographics. Essentially, our program, is, which has been blessed with over 400 volunteers, our numbers show that we need more, male, more minority males to be advocates for these children. To me, I think the best rec prerequisite to be a volunteer is someone that possesses passion and vision. It doesn't require any specialization, just a little bit of your time and passion and vision to assist these children who are in care. And for more information about CASA or to become a volunteer, well, you can visit our website, and that's uh, rccasa.org, or certainly call us at any time. Uh, the number here is 576-1735. We'd love to talk to you more about the program, or just come visit us. Stop in at 1701 Main Street, room 407 at the courthouse. We'd love to see you, love to talk to you, um, and just, you know, share some of the CASA stories with you. There are important changes coming to the lighting aisle at your favorite store. Starting in January of 2012, new lighting efficiency standards are going to be phasing out the 100 watt incandescent light bulb. At the same time, we're going to be phasing in new energy efficient choices like halogen super saver bulbs and LED bulbs. A halogen bulb you can actually see here. We have an incandescent light bulb uh, on the far left. Next to it is a halogen super saver bulb. This bulb is very similar to an incandescent, but it has halogen gas inside that makes the filament burn more efficiently. As a result, this bulb uses about a third less energy than the incandescent next to it. LED bulbs, which you see on the far end, create light in a totally different way. There's a semiconductor chip inside that produces the light. As a result, LEDs are 80% more efficient than incandescent and last about 25,000 hours. That's the equivalent of about 20 years if you run it for three hours a day. To help sort through all these lighting choices, the industry has partnered with the U.S. Department of Energy to create a new label called Lighting Facts. It looks a lot like the Nutrition Facts label that you're used to seeing on your food, and the Lighting Facts label will give you all the information you need to know to purchase a light bulb. It'll tell you how much energy the bulb uses, how bright it is, and how long it's going to last. So the next time you go shopping for a light bulb, pick up a box, turn it over, get those Lighting Facts, and you'll have the information you need to choose the right bulb for your home and your pocketbook. You can get more information on these new lighting products and the new lighting labels at our website, www.sylvania.com. Still to come, we've got that MyMetroTV.com Movie Minute. Plus, we'll take a look at some of the things going on in and around the Metro. And Jamal Bates makes his way in with this week's edition of Saturday Inspiration. All that and more when MyMetroTV.com Daybreak continues. Good morning, Metro. I'm Jamal Beeks, and welcome to this edition of Saturday Inspiration. Today on the show, got my man, Minister Lawrence Rush of uh, Lawrence Rush and Upper Room. How you doing, sir? Doing pretty good, Jamal. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you so much for getting up early today and uh, being on the show. Uh, tell us about how long has uh, Minister Lawrence Rush been singing? I've been singing since I was about seven, eight years old. Wow. Um, I led my first solo in church about seven, eight years old. I wrote my first song when I was about 14, 15 years old. Okay, so you've been singing for a while? Been doing it for a while. Come from a singing family? Yes, I do. I come from a singing family. Um, some of us sing and some of us do better things. <laughs> Okay, okay, and we'll leave that to the minds of the audience to guess whatever those better things are. Okay, okay. now what makes your music um, unique? What what makes it different from any other artist uh, who who is who plans to do music or he, who or who is doing music right now? Well, I feel like everyone is an instrument when it comes down to music, and what makes you unique is that you write from your heart, okay. and not write just because of a 
good beat or something that somebody is saying, um, you write from what's within. Mm -hmm. And when you transfer that to paper, people actually get to see you as an artist and see you not just as an artist, but as an individual, what's in you. Gotcha. So all that sort of thing, you just kind of comes out. All right, man. Now, before we talk about your brand new CD, real quick, you're nominated Rhythm of Gospel Awards for, how, how, how does that feel? Man, I felt great uh, when uh, Mike Rose called me and told me that we got nominated. I told him to stop playing. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. Um, I had to go online to see it for myself. And not just that, we got nominated, but we got nominated in four categories. Wow. So um, we want y'all to go out and vote for us. So where do we go to vote? Uh, Rhythm of Gospel, gospel Awards com. Rhythm of Gospel Awards dot com. Tell us about the brand new CD and the song that you will be performing right now. The brand new CD is entitled Never Alone. Um, the last year, two years, I spent writing, and I was very careful about what I want to be placed on this album. And my main thing is that I wanted people to feel what I was writing at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the project is entitled Never Alone, which is the project title, and uh, we're going to be performing that just to remind everybody, even during this economic crisis or whatever crisis they may find themselves in, that they're never alone, no matter what the circumstance is. All right, so here's Minister Lawrence, Lawrence Rush and the Upper Room, Never Alone. She just said that, Lord, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. I mean, you know that God has got your back and that he's on your side. Listen to these words. Sometimes I feel, I feel I have to walk alone. And then sometimes, sometimes I feel, I feel that God has left me on. God has left me on my own. Oh, I've been persecuted, persecuted but not forsaken. I've been cast out. Cast out, but not destroyed. Promise me this one thing. Cause you'll never leave me alone. Hallelujah. Give God glory and never leave you alone. Sometimes, sometimes I feel I feel I have to walk alone. I have to walk alone. Sometimes, sometimes I feel I feel that God is left me alone. Once again, thank you to Minister Lawrence Rush and the Upper Room for that great performance and for the interview as well. And don't forget for more information about where they would be in their CD, check out ministerrush.com. That's going to do it for this edition of the show. Don't forget to check me out, jamalbakes.info or Facebook or Twitter me as well. Tweet me. That's right. I'll be looking for you, all right? And we'll see you back here next week for more of Saturday Inspiration. <laughs>